All right, today we're doing a $960 PC build. That's right, everything on this table, when in terms of computer parts, is $960 and is going to perform pretty well in 1440p gaming and 1080p gaming. And we'll get into benchmarks after we build this PC. So I'm gonna go down, describe all the parts that we have here and what kind of price to performance value that you can expect from it and why I chose these parts. So let's get into that. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel. We discuss PC passion reviews, guides, mods, and more. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. So if you're new here, make sure you do that. Let's get into why I chose these parts and what parts that we have. All right, so first up, it's gonna be a little bit of a mix and match, but yes, everything here is about $960 retail. So uh, a lot of these things you can find on sale and actually get it for cheaper, but I'm just gonna say safely $960 so that you're not expecting too low of a price when you're going out and searching for some these parts and if you're interested in any of these parts there will be links down in the description below to get your hands on them first up is we have an intel i3-8100 which is a four core processor with four threads there's no hyper threading and you might be saying well for 960 dollars you're only going with an i3 four core processor yes yes i am this thing's actually quite decent for 1080p and 1440p gaming performance especially at 1440p because more of that gets put on the gpu than the actual processor and this actually gets clocked pretty nicely at 3.7 gigahertz at boost clock i believe and sometimes over that depending on the application or game um, but a pretty solid processor and we'll get into benchmarks and everything later on in the video like i mentioned but this is 120 dollars uh, you can usually find it in a bundle or on sale for about 109 to even sometimes $90. Next up, we have, excuse me, the MSI Golden GTX 980 Ti. And this thing is a beast. And I recently did a review of this card just a couple videos ago discussing the 4K gaming performance of this card in 2018. So make sure to check out that video if you're interested in picking up a 980 Ti. And it's not just a Golden Edition exclusively, it's all 980 Ti's, they perform relatively the same. So this is a fantastic card and will be capable of 1440p gaming no problem in my opinion and the ram that we're using is not the corsair vengeance ram it's actually the g skill rip jaws ram it's a 16 gigabyte kit 2 by 8 gigabytes and it's clocked at 3000 megahertz and i picked it up for around 154 dollars and uh, ram prices are going down so uh you know if you can clock a nice sale on these you can actually get something pretty decent in terms of price to performance not bad in terms of what it was a couple of months ago uh, the motherboard that we're using here is the rog strix b360 i gaming motherboard it's a mini itx motherboard of course and it's a fairly feature rich board i won't get into everything but it's got a pretty feature rich rear io including wi-fi that is integrated with the motherboard also supporting up to 2866 megahertz ram it is not overclockable since it's a b360 board and not a z370 board but you also get an m.2 shield over here that's pretty nice and it was about 125 dollars you can find some that are cheaper but this was a pretty good all-around solution for me so for storage and keeping our os on here we have a 500 gigabyte ssd and it's by western digital now it's not the nvme drive that we have here it's actually a different drive it's just a regular m.2 drive which is slower than an nvme drive in case you guys are wondering they use the same interface but they go at different speeds so uh it will have regular sata based ssd speeds but it will be using the m.2 interface which is completely fine for me right now and still has really good speeds in terms of comparing that to a hard drive so this is around a hundred dollars um you can find them on sale for sometimes even cheaper um, SSD prices are getting ridiculously low and is absolutely fantastic to see. So you can also snag a deal on that as well and save some cash there. But overall for hundred bucks is not too bad. And you can add like a one terabyte or two terabyte drive to this build uh, and into this case for around 60 to $70. But if you wanted to add that onto the price, that would make this build around a thousand dollars. Cooling our CPU is the Reven Hans cooler, like Hans Gruber from, uh, Die Hard, which is an absolutely fantastic movie, by the way. I've had very good experiences with their past coolers that I've worked with before. If you guys are unfamiliar with Reven coolers, I highly suggest you check out some of my uh, reviews on them as they do 
create some very high quality products and you should definitely check that out. So this is around $40 and it's comparable in size to the Hyper 212 Evo. So we're gonna test it out in this case as well. We'll be using one fan in here uh, by Skith or Skythe. I don't know how to say it. It's S-C-Y-T-H-E. It's made by the same manufacturer, I believe, but also the reviews on this fan are incredibly well received that of the levels of noctua and be quiet so this is definitely something to check out this case only supports one fan up to 120 millimeters so we'll be using this one and it's about 14 dollars. so getting that extra airflow is going to be essential especially building in a smaller enclosure and if the hans cooler doesn't work we also have the reven brontes or the brontes um, however you want to say it this is a very small cooler, but very well performing and incredibly quiet, even at its max speed. I did a review of this as well, if you guys wanna check this cooler out. So this is a last resort in case this doesn't work, in case we have any size incompatibilities. And last up, we have the FSP Dagger 500 watt power supply. This is a small form factor power supply. It's fully modular. It's from FSP, it's a five year warranty and an 80 plus gold rating. I do really like FSP power supply. Supplies. And just to give you an idea of how small it is, this is how small the power supply is. So it's it's really awesome. I love this form factor and it's really neat to see 550 watts being squeezed out of this. And the 980 Ti is recommended to have a 600 watt power supply and we only have 500 watts here. So it draws about 250 or around there in terms of power draw. That's something to keep in mind and it's kind of hard to squeeze more power out of these mini ITX builds because it's limited by the small form factor power supplies because you can only get so much power out of such a small uh, footprint. So that's something to consider. And also the i380-100 doesn't require that much power. So I think this will be very doable, but we'll check that out in a little bit in case you guys are wondering about pairing some of these components together. But anyways, we're gonna get into building this PC and we're gonna get into a time lapse. And this is my first mini ITX build. So excuse me if I make some mistakes along the way, but uh, this will be a lot of fun. Goldenfield case was a pleasure to build in surprisingly for a case I've never heard of before and for a company that I've never heard of before. And we'll get into the gaming benchmarks and thermal performance in just a little bit, but I want to go over the build experience first. So I was able to remove some of the internal panels that house the drives and I was able to get a nice 
open space for my hands to get into and work with all the components that I have inside the case. And this case was actually surprisingly accommodating. It actually fit that 980 Ti in there, which I was pretty surprised because it's actually bending the case wall a little bit, but it works perfectly fine in there. And it also houses my CPU cooler, the Hans cooler from Reven. And that's not a small form factor cooler either. That's, that's like a full cooler. A small form factor cooler actually looks flat. You've seen them before and I also have a video about them if you want to check those kind of coolers out. But besides that, everything else is pretty accommodating inside this case and I'm glad that I have that small form factor power supply from FSP, which you guys can also check out down below if you want to check that out. That actually doesn't impede with the space that I have the, for the 980 Ti because this case can fit an ATX power supply inside of it, but that would completely cut off the space that's used for the 980Ti. So another recommendation I would make is to get fan grills if you're building inside of a mini ITX PC just to keep any of those wires from stopping the fan blades or hitting the fan blades at all so that you can have nice open clearance for your fan blades and not have to worry about anything hitting them. So that is a worthy investment in my opinion, but this case works out surprisingly well. Now the only thing to worry about here is thermal performance because all the components are close together like a laptop, but a laptop has laptop components. These are full desktop grade components. So let's see what those thermals are like with this PC. So in terms of temps, we have the GPU sitting at 85 degrees Celsius. Celsius. And in terms of CPU temps, we have it sitting at 58 degrees Celsius. 58 degrees Celsius is perfectly fine. That's running Ida 64. But for the GPU, it's 10 degrees hotter than it is inside of a standard ATX case, which is fine because all these components are very close together. So these temps are just fine. And in terms of noise, um, idling, it sits at 42.8 decibels. And at load, it sits at 51.4 decibels, which is pretty audible. But with the CPU noise test, it sits at 42.8 decibels, so you can barely hear this fan going off while stressing the CPU, which shows that this CPU cooler has a lot of headroom in terms of thermal performance. So that can be something to consider if you're looking at this cooler and also considering this is inside of a mini ITX case. So the Hans cooler actually did a very good job at cooling this. And that synth fan sitting in the back, I don't know how to pronounce it, the one that I showcased, is absolutely phenomenal. I could not hear it whatsoever. So that's what the thermal noise performance is like. And overall, it's pretty respectable for a mini ITX PC. All right, and now the gaming benchmarks. And in terms of settings, we're using optimal settings. If you guys want to check out an in-depth video about that, there'll be a link over here. And that pretty much just maxes all the settings out, except for anti-aliasing and post-processing and a couple other things that don't really make too much of a visual difference, but really tax your GPU. So for Doom, we have an average frame rate of 133 0.4 FPS and a 1% low of 100.5 FPS, which is well above 60 FPS and a 1440p. That's quite impressive. And that the 8100 is keeping up with the 980 Ti in terms of going well over 100 FPS. So it's able to keep up with those frames. How much are we losing in terms of performance? I don't know. We're not testing the bottleneck here. But the fact that it can keep up at 133 frames is pretty impressive for an average frame rate and can make good use of a 144 hertz refresh rate monitor. All right, for the next game, we have PUBG, which had an average frame rate of 73.9 and a 1% low of 47.2, which is very respectable because PUBG is not only graphically intensive, it's also CPU intensive. So it's good to see that there's a good balance of both the CPU and the GPU working in harmony here to keep it above 60 FPS at 14. 40p and we are using the maximum render distance so that taxes both the gpu and the cpu a lot so you can still turn down that setting a little bit and still get very good visual and frame rate performance at 1440p so that's very nice to see and the next benchmark is metro last light redux and that had an average frame rate of 101.2 fps and a one percent low of 65.8 again keeping it above that 60 FPS mark and making use of 100 frames per second, which would look really nice on a 144 Hertz monitor. So again, Metro is a pretty harsh game to run and that's with PhysX off and anti-aliasing down to four times, I believe. And that really opens up a lot of performance for both the GPU and the CPU that would be taxing otherwise with those 
settings turned on. So this is a good performance all around and I'm pretty happy with this result, especially at 1440p. Battlefield 1 is the next game and we have an average FPS of 103.5, which again is fantastic, and a 1% low of 60.1 FPS. So again, above that 60 FPS mark and keeping it in good margin with the average frame rate. So it was overall a very smooth and enjoyable experience all around. And the last benchmark is Fortnite, which is still pretty intensive on the GPU and CPU at those higher resolutions and especially when we're using epic settings and with low anti-aliasing and post-processing and with 100% 3D resolution scale. So that's something to keep in mind. And we had an average FPS of 90.7 and a 1% low of 75.4, which is pretty close together, showing that this was an overall very smooth and enjoyable playing experience. So overall, this thing handles 1440p. Now, if we were testing 4K resolution, it wouldn't be so much on the CPU now and be pushed more onto the GPU. So I didn't really do any 4k benchmarks but i have tested the same games with the 980 ti at 4k resolution if you want to see those results i have a video right over here benchmarked the 980 ti in 2018 with the same tiles that we're using here in this video so overall this mini itx build is a 1440p gaming monster and you can get a lot of performance out of it i would recommend these parts in case you're looking for something that is going to be in a small form factor pc and the reason why i went with the 8100 is it does not produce a lot of heat and it doesn't require that much power allowing for the 980 ti to be fully utilized for the power supply and being able to supply good stable clean power to the 980 ti as well as 8100 simultaneously and thus we don't have any blackouts we don't have any crashes we don't have any artifacting and everything works pretty nice and smoothly for a mini itx pc build like this one and that's why i pretty much chose it now you can choose a ryzen alternative which does have lower tdps on average compared to coffee lake and that's fine as well but in terms of intel performance this kept up very well for the 8100 and the 980 ti getting over 100 frames per second on several titles at 1440p so the fact that the 8100 kept up that far is pretty impressive to see and it's a locked cpu at the same time so overall i really can't complain and you can also snag those 8100s for like 90 bucks sometimes so so overall this pc is pretty impressive and if you want to check out any of the parts that are listed in this video they'll be down in the description below and if you guys want to support the channel because it is expensive to run a pc hardware channel uh, i have merchandise like this which is the senior t-shirt and that actually refers to a video that i did just a couple weeks ago and it's about surprising my friend with an entire gaming pc setup so if you're new here check out that video as well and also i have some merchandise like this over here that you can use to make your setup look really nice and there's also patreon down in the link below for exclusive content if you want to help out over there so thank you guys for watching if you're new here consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel and i'll catch you guys in the next one